people in the third world die every single day so that you can drive your shitty white guilt symbol of a Prius and act like you're helping them. Let's go on to the hurricane. Let's talk about this. Because I, I will tell you this, I always am pretty hesitant to get into blaming with natural disasters. You know, they did it with Bush and Katrina saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, or Kanye, George Bush does not care about black people for the greatest reaction <laughs> in television history by Mike Myers. <laughs> oh. um, it, it's, it's easy to just finger point, right? But sometimes you do have very clear cut examples of of red tape bureaucracy or ideology actually harming people and taking lives. And I think we've reached that point here with this uh, hurricane in this administration. So three days after Trump had uh, gone to survey the destruction of uh, Hurricane Helene, which is very, I, I've never heard that name. It's like Helena, Helen, Helene, but Helene. Hmm. Helene, yeah, I think it's uh, Dutch. It could be. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I hope that explains it. Yeah. Well, I think Dutch is when the hurricane just splits in two evenly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Kamala Biden finally traveled to the area three days after Trump. And I don't know if you know, uh, Biden is still uh, allegedly former vice president. Mm -hmm. Today, President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris both traveled to states affected by Hurricane Helene. Former President Trump went to Georgia on Monday to get a first-hand look at the damage and help distribute supplies. He criticized Ms. Harris for not coming to the area immediately. Okay, so you can just play the blame game. They didn't get here early enough. These people came later. Okay, but we do have a serious problem here. And, and you can comment below if you know what it is. I'll tell you exactly what it is. It's an ideology based on equity that kills actual people. The idea here, and if you see Kamala Harris, the administration, and FEMA under their watch have made it clear that as we're dealing with natural disasters, and that doesn't, it doesn't matter what it is, by the way, natural disasters, if we're dealing with strikes, if we are dealing with public education, everything has to be done looking through the lens of equity. It is our um, lowest income communities and our communities of color that are most impacted by these extreme conditions and, and impacted by, by issues that are not of their own making. And, and so women. we. Absolutely. And so we have <laughs> to address this in a way that is about giving resources based on equity. So you hear that? Based on yeah. equity. Based on equity that matters because then you're going to be able to make sense of some of this red tape let me be really clear mother nature is a cruel mistress okay i understand that but right now people have been dying in the united states of america while at the debate they were harping about climate change scientists say climate change makes these hurricanes larger stronger and more deadly because of the historic rainfall. So the, the, the solution for us is to continue to move forward that climate change is real. Reducing our impact is absolutely critical. The overwhelming consensus among scientists is that the Earth's climate is warming at an unprecedented rate. Margaret, thank you, Noor. Oh, well, thank you for that relevant <laughs> fact check because I guess the overwhelming consensus among scientists is uh, that this hurricane was caused by uh, climate change. Uh, no, no, no. It just it made it stronger. Apparently, oh, okay. we've never had Category 4 hurricanes. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Hey, forward. everyone shut up. People are dying. Sorry, that was just symbolic. No, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love you. People are dying. Want to talk about a 1.6 degree uh, rise? Yeah. Uh, follow up. Go fuck yourself. How about that? People are dying right now and they can't get food. And they don't have access to water, electricity. Oh, oh, okay. We want to talk about polar bears. This is a gross exaggeration to make a point, but you understand what you're seeing here is the people who suffer and the elite who enact policy to protect themselves at the cost of your suffering. And I would say that with the people here, certainly in this election, you, you do have a very clear standout in Donald Trump. So let's look first at the hurricane. Uh, Donald Trump has done a lot, by the way. He started a GoFundMe, which raised, I believe, it was uh, somewhere over $4 million. We can yeah. bring up that link. Fantastic. And he's yeah. also um, worked with Elon Musk to try and, you know, mobilize Starlink to help these people. We're trying to, I just spoke to Elon. I'm getting him. I want to, we want to get Starlink hooked up because they have no communication whatsoever. And Elon, Elon will always come through. We know that. 
I, I believe just an update on that. I, I do believe that Elon did come through for Starlink. So anybody who has Starlink in the affected area, and there's a map of this, it's actually going to work whether you've paid for it or not. Mm. Um, so he's he's been able to kind of like geo kind of lock it to where it's in these areas. Starlink will work no matter if you've paid for it or not. So if you have it or have access to one and they can get those out, people will have access to communications. That's great. It's fantastic. And if you're with Cricket, kiss your ass goodbye. Yeah, you're done. <laughs> Try to book a flight on Spirit Airlines, too. So. Just be sure to be sure to ziplock your weave. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> so um, here's the crazy thing. Okay, Donald Trump raised uh, with a GoFundMe over $4 million. And I suggest you go and you know help them out, raise, uh, you know, yeah. donate whatever you can. Think about this for a second. And this is what's so perverse about someone who is currently in office, right, uh, running for re-election. They basically, it's like senioritis, right? They just sort of leave the last year. Yeah. I don't know if you know this, but, you know, the Harris-Biden campaign and now Harris-Walls, they've already raised $700 million, Jeez. right? $700 million. For hey, hurricane relief? Yeah, no, no it's for their, for their campaign. Oh. For the campaign. Oh. You think, like, could you toss a few mil to the people who are dying? I know it's not my place to say, but you have someone who's not even in office who's raising millions of dollars for these people and also giving his time, which, by the way, is very valuable for him. And, of course, uh, Kamala Harris couldn't be bothered to do that for a good long while, too. Yeah. $700 million to beat the guy who was going down and helping? Nothing can just be given to these people? Oh, no, that's right. You want our tax dollars to go to it. And then let's see how that works out because our tax dollars aren't going directly to help people. Our tax dollars are being laundered through FEMA and government bureaucracy in the name of equity. Don't know if you know this, people are dying. Yeah. By the way, when, when we talk about FEMA and we'll get to it in a minute, I just saw some lower thirds saying basically FEMA is, is running out of money. They don't have enough money to be able to do what they need to do. Do me a favor, research, pull up there's a couple of charts going around on our pictures of what FEMA has been giving money to recently. Hint, not American citizens. Mm. We'll see why. Maybe they run short of funds here to help American citizens when they're displaced right. and hurting. Well, she was nowhere to be found. Uh, and uh, then you have uh, former Vice President Biden, uh, who was at his beach house in Delaware when he was asked about his absence. Uh, you know, Joe Biden is as Joe Biden does. In retrospect, do you wish that you had more resources in North Carolina, knowing what you know now? And do you wish that you spent the weekend here in Washington, rather than in Delaware? Come on, stop it, game. We have rather than Delaware. It's 90 miles from here, okay? I Geography was on the lesson. Phone the whole time <laughs> working on that. And Sir? the resources, the question is not whether we get more re This is a list of every resource we're getting in there, but the question is how to get it in. It's hard to get it from point A to point B. It's hard to get if some of these roads are wiped out, communities are wiped out. What, no There's helicopters? no ability to land. There's no ability to get trucks through. There's no ability to get a whole range of things through. So, well, I mean, anyway. Mr. President. I sound frustrated, I am. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. You're wrong about that. You're, you're wrong about that. We'll show you people who've actually been able to go, locals who have done work. Yeah. Uh, including, by the way, someone who was threatened with arrest if he did use a helicopter. So it's not that there's no place to lend, there's no place to do good. It's that the government can't do it, and so they want to make sure that nobody else does because they don't want to look bad. So let's again compare the people versus the elite. In this case, the people are the locals. Here's a man who borrowed a tractor and started clearing a path for emergency responders uh, instead of, you know, government officials. Well, I don't know who these are. But I'm about to get to work, and I'll ask for forgiveness later. Good, good for him. You know, that's yeah. what you want to see, right? If ever you watch a film, it's the community coming together to help one yeah. another. These people are most affected. They know their neighbors best. It's almost like limited government and local government is more effective than federal government. Here's another good Samaritan. Uh, this man is Jordan. I want to make sure I get his name right. Uh, Sidem, Sidem. I, I don't know his name. I've only read it. But uh, this was a man who said, you know what? I'm going to take my helicopter, bring supplies to these areas that are inaccessible. And hey, isn't that wonderful? But instead, uh, I don't know if you know this, the government stepped in and said, no, 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 do that. And uh, you'll actually get uh, arrested. 
Stories of survival are now being shared days after Helene wreaked havoc in North Carolina. But one Pageland man's efforts to help are now the source of controversy. He flew his own chopper on his own dime to help stranded victims. But that man says he abandoned his rescue missions after a fire official threatened to have him thrown in jail. Jordan Sidham piled food and water into his helicopter Saturday and headed up toward Banner Elk. The only way through a mountain gap in Lake Lure. I was greeted by the uh, at that time, I didn't know, but Lake Lure fire chief or assistant chief, maybe, and he shut down the whole operation. He said, I'm, I'm letting you know, Making and at that bad. point, he waved for two law enforcement officers to come over and told me that again, if I go back up the mountain, I would be arrested. Just think about that for a second. You want to talk about the legitimate role of government? Arresting a citizen who's trying to bring supplies to people who could die? Yeah. That's the role of your government. Yes, they're the government. They're here to help, right? Also, this isn't just something that exists in a vacuum. So here's someone from Twitter. His name is uh, Ryan Tyre talking about FEMA in this situation. This is the rule, not the exception. He said, I cannot confirm the reasons why in North Carolina, but I can tell you the reasons in other storms I have worked. I was able to coordinate several trucks full of supplies uh, to be brought down, but I was informed in that meeting that all the semi-trucks full of food, water, and hygiene supplies were to be turned around. The reason they gave us was that these donations were not from companies on their preferred vendors list. So the good news is though, FEMA and these people while stopping uh, citizens from being actual neighbors, they're giving a whopping $750 to victims. So that'll, uh, you know, that'll handle your house repairs. And why is this happening? Goal number one on FEMA's website is instill equity as a foundation of emergency management. Ah, ah, equity. That's where we are. Equity, not equal opportunity, uh, but equity, meaning ensured equal outcomes. We usually refer to that when we're talking about the job space or school affirmative action. In this case, because it's a religion, leftism, and a huge portion of it is equity, we've actually injected that dogma into natural disaster relief. There should, hey, hey, was your house destroyed? Are you in the area of the natural disaster? Are you in the danger zone? Guess what? You get help and you're allowed to help your fellow citizen. There you go. That's yeah. equity. Yeah. <clears throat> could, could you think of anything less relevant than race or sexual orientation at a time like this? Well, the government, government certainly sees it that way. Yeah. Can't even help your neighbor, you know? Yeah. It, what's that old, uh, what's that Tim, uh, Tim Walls saying? Uh, one person's neighborly is another person's illegal. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. Neighborliness is great right up until you try to help people in, in a disaster. Now there's, I was talking to uh, Mr. Guns and Gear yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, he's getting some information out of North Carolina and I believe maybe Tennessee area that he's like, this is, Really, really, really troubling information. He's trying to corroborate it. So I connected him with Mug Club Undercover. Hopefully we'll have an update for you guys on that. But nothing about this seems like it's being handled correctly is the main point. The, the problem with that is that people's lives are on the line. Yeah, People's lives literally are on the line right now. Unfortunately, a lot of times our, our attention gets redirected somewhere else. It's election or it's Israel or it's something else right now when you have people in your own backyard not being taken care of. And this is exactly who Donald Trump is on every single issue. America first is not saying America and nobody else. It's saying America first. Yeah. And it does not seem like Kamala Harris and Tim Walls, by, based on their response, have any understanding of how to put Americans first. Mm -hmm. Every decision they make puts other people ahead and says, we have to be equitable about this and citizens can't do it. By the way, if you own that helicopter or not tractor, track ho, just saying so we don't get admonished later on, make them arrest you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Just make them arrest you. I'm in a helicopter, sir. I'm going to do exactly what you say until I'm 15 feet off the ground. Then I'm flicking you off and I'm yeah. going to help some people. Sorry, I'm doing it. Let me so let, find me. Let's put yeah. this in context. You think people in North Carolina pay? Do you think those people pay taxes? A good portion of them pay taxes, probably. Yeah. So they helped fund over. A, I don't know what the number is now. Over a hundred billion dollars at least pledged to Ukraine. I believe over 150 billion dollars pledged at this point. So they spent money to send send that over there. Yeah. They get $750 right now, and they pay for the government to block their neighbor from helping them with tractors and helicopters. Does that seem like a government that is looking out for the people at that point? How many more signs do you need? And I want to make one more point, too, here. Um, they're talking about climate change during the debate uh, in relation to this natural disaster. 
I was in Cancun right, back when they had the Cancun Climate Summit. It, summit. it was still the Kyoto Protocol, I believe, mm -hmm. before it became the Paris, the Kyoto Accord, before it became the Paris Agreement. I always forget. It went Montreal, Kyoto, Paris. All right. I was there. All right. Let's put it this way. Uh, these people in North Carolina facing this tragedy, they have been thrust into a scenario where they are temporarily uh, in the third world. It's a microcosm of the third world, right? They don't have access to energy, supplies, food, communication, electricity. And, and you see how disastrous it is in that scenario, right? If they don't have access to basic energy, clean food, which of course also, by the way, requires energy to transport. Okay, so it's terrible. What about the rest of the globe that is in the third world every day? When those people are struggling for food, for energy, natural gas, and you sit on your podium talking about climate change. People in the third world die every single day so that you can drive your shitty white guilt symbol of a Prius and act like you're helping them. Let's be really clear. Here in the United States, in your day-to-day, -day, gas prices go up. All right, maybe we're eating chuck roast tonight. In, in, a, in an area like Mexico, outside of the tourist areas that rich white people from the States get to visit, energy goes up that same price. It's inconvenient for you. They die. They can't heat their food. They don't have access to food, clean water. So I just want to put that into context. You think of what, what these Americans are going through right now. And, and by the way, they shouldn't because this is the United States of America. We've created better. And yes, we deserve better. But that is the rest of the world on a daily basis. And the climate change based policies are catastrophic and murderous. You can let me know if you disagree. If yeah. you think it's more important to, uh, you know, ensure if you believe that we could uh, prevent a 1.6 degree temperature rise. You know what? Call it four degrees. I don't care. Here's, here's what I was talking about with the FEMA funds, too. Look at that. $110 million emergency food and shelter program. Uh, migrants, 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 mm. migrants, migrants. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm. For the people. It's not that I don't have a heart, but it's America first. For the people, by the people. It doesn't make sense that it's coming from FEMA, like the disaster relief. Yeah. That, that's a disaster? I mean, I guess it is a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> that they created. <laughs> yeah. The border, is, border a is a disaster. It's official. That's a, good, by the way, that's a great point, Josh. I walked it's myself right into that one. It certainly exactly. is for Lime Scooter in New York. <laughs> the Harris administration has admitted that the border problem is a disaster because they've used FEMA to try to solve it. Yes. Dang, look at that. I thought of that, and I, nice. I really, I, that was a concept. I really thought of the premeditated. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. I don't either. <laughs> hey, if you enjoyed watching this video, you probably enjoy watching the show. It's live. Weekdays at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern. If you want that to continue, consi if you slap like or slap the comment button uh, down there, I'll slap Gerald. Wait. If you don't slap it, I'll slap. Either way, I'm going to slap Gerald.